first day of placement and we've got some snow. Good start to the day. So I'm really fortunate to have my own car to use. On really like bad days like this, where it's snowing, where it's wet, where it's raining, it's best to drive in as opposed to cycle in. This is because by the time we get to the hospital and when we see patients, it's important we look professional, that we aren't cold and freezing, and also that we aren't soaking wet. I once had a scenario where I decided to cycle and I got caught in a thunderstorm and I was completely soaked uh, by the time I got to the hospital and it wasn't pleasant at all. So yeah, driving is a luxury, but I think one that's warranted given that we have to go and see patients after and want to look and feel comfortable. So we met the consultant that is going to be looking after us for the next four weeks. Yeah. We're just waiting um, in the waiting room for the consultant to come pick us up and take us to the ward for us to see our first patients. Christina, do you want to say hello? So this is hello. Christina. Hi. Uh, so Christina, you're at John's, aren't you? Yes, I'm at John's. Yeah, I'm not sure you can hear her, but yeah, so Christina's on my um, sort of same block. So we're going to be together seeing yeah. patients. Uh, <laughs> what, hopefully getting good histories. Yeah, there's a really interesting one on Seaport. Yeah. So, yeah. She didn't say what it was though, right? So I'm currently in the doctor's office having some coffee. Mm, yes, very clever to prepare this at home because a coffee in hospital is so expensive. Two, three pounds a cup, few a day is what? 10 pounds a day on coffee, which is unsustainable. So yeah, make your own in a flask, it stays nice and hot and it's very refreshing. Quite interesting, lots of cases, lots of different um, sort of comorbidities, which means as well as the patients coming in with a complaint, with an illness, they'll have other pre-existing illnesses which we can look at. So lots of potential to learn a lot and we need to make the most of it whilst we can. I'm just going to quickly read a few notes on my iPad whilst I'm waiting here. I've got a mask fitting appointment at 1.30. So a mask fit is an appointment which um, sort of tests how tight a you know, professional mask, not this one, sits in your face. So a mask like this is known as a surgical mask and these are not enough when you go into sort of slightly higher COVID risk areas. And so the FFP3 masks, which are slightly tighter fitting and you know have got better filtration systems they are the ones you need when going for higher risk areas and so you need to get a special appointment then after that we have a three-hour practical which involves um, ng tubes so nasogastric tubes um which also known as feeding tubes yeah should be good fun and a lot to learn from that as well and to our good fortune it's still snowing outside i was on lunch but i've got to move my car quickly my hair's a mess <laughs> My coat's in the doctor's office, so it's a bit of a cold walk towards the car. I've got my mask fitting fairly soon, as I explained to you earlier. Yeah, let's quickly sort this, and we'll head back into the wards, see some patients, then get some NG tubes down people later this afternoon. The hospital looks quite nice, actually, with all this snow around. But yeah, the cold is fairly relentless. My stethoscope always wants to fall off. Come on, don't leave me just yet. Still have med school to finish, Mr. Sanskrit. Right, so I picked up my stuff from the wards. 
time to get my mask fit test done. So as you can see, waiting for a mask fit test. Um, they used some pretty complicated machinery, took half an hour or so. Had to do a few movement exercises whilst wearing the mask to ensure that the seal was nice and tight. Luckily with my first attempt, I passed everything with a good result. Finished my mask fit test, got the right mask, and now I'm heading to the education center. It's behind me there. We're a bit late, but mask fitting is good enough of an excuse to get by. I'm going to be pretty safe in even the worst of COVID areas. Took a surprisingly long time, actually. Wrong card. Credit card. Thank you. I need a quick wee as well. So after the NG tube session, I headed back home and then it was time for dinner. For dinner, as you can see, I had some leftover bolognese that I made. So I just, you know, prepared a few bagels that had to be eaten and with some salad leaves, as you can see. Bolognese isn't always the healthiest of choices, but it's very filling and it's easy to heat up and you can make a big batch of it in one go. All right, guys, so I got back. Uh, I had some dinner, as you guys saw, drinking some um, coffee that I made earlier that I didn't finish. It's really good to have like an ice flask. So this is my second sort of um, thermos flask. These are, aren't the cheapest, but they work really well. They're quite thick, perfectly sized, which you just throw in your bag. Also they seal very well. You've got like this cap, which seals in tightly, but also a very nice thick um, like inner cap as well. So um, yeah, really recommend a flask for med school. I have seen hydro flasks and they're really cool. So I might get a hydro flask as well because they've got the really cool straps. So, um, you know, if I'm wearing a bag with a strap, I can just sort of tie it on. And again, it's not inside my bag. So in case it does leak, it's not gonna leak all over my computer and all. We were very busy um, today. It was a lot of admin, got car park stuff sorted, bumped into three or four people I knew, had to take a phone call whilst waiting um, in the hospital. When you're on medical placements, one of the like best things you can do is befriend the nurses and the healthcare assistants that work there because they will make your life a lot easier. They will give you the opportunities to take bloods, to you know, do procedures on patients. We also then have the NG tube lesson, of course. I sort of got uh, my friend to do it to see how she did it, and I also did it myself. So I'm pretty confident with that. I think I need to go back in about May, June to sort of show the assessors that I can do it before my final assessment on that in July. NG tubes actually pretty complicated. I didn't realize there was like all these different numbers to do with them to ensure they're given sort of the right depth into the person. And I really want to highlight how, you know, these vlogs aren't to sort of teach you how to do things. It's to really encourage you to go and learn from whoever's teaching you. You've got to remember that different hospitals, different trusts, they teach you things in a different way. They have different methods. And so it's really important that you do things according to your local trust. The UK is a huge country. The world is a big place. And so each institution will have a slightly different way of doing things. And it's important to have things personalized. Now, anyway, now I'm going to quickly do some work. I've got an hour of tutoring to do later as well. So time to sort of hunker down for the evening, get some work done. I'm thinking of doing a live stream on YouTube, maybe later on. We've got to see, and I also want to make sure I sleep early. I've got an early start tomorrow. I'm leaving the house at eight-ish. So, you know, I want to make sure I'm rested and not sleep deprived. Good speaking to you all. Let's do some work and I'll catch you guys later.